All right, hello everyone, and welcome to session zero of Star Trek Mata Hari. This is a Star Trek Adventures role playing game, as using the rule set by Modifius Entertainment. We're a brand new Star Trek Adventures game that is going to be meeting every other Saturday, which means if you're hearing this, you're probably looking forward to our May 2nd session. But since this is session zero, I thought I would keep things off stream just in case we have technical jitters, real life player jitters, etc., etc. But speaking of players, I would like everyone to go around and introduce ourselves. So let's start with our captain. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Charles Wolf, uh, also known as Der Wolf, which is German for the Wolf. I will be pay playing the captain uh, of the of the starship uh, Malik Jovan. Very good, first officer. Hey, my name is Nikhil Vakshi, uh, or at Sarkar on Discord. Um, I'm going to be playing the first officer, Commander Jara Rayon, who is a Bajoran. Okay. Then we have Mr. Jennings. Hey, I'm Mike, a.k.a. Tave Jennings, the Rommel in Chief of Security. And then Mr. Prawl. Hello, everyone. I am Alex Horowitz. I am playing the Cardassian Intelligence Officer, Tarek Prawl. Okay. Mr. Jensen. I am Jeff, and I am playing Lieutenant Commander Jensen, the science officer. And last but not least, Mr. Tolep. I am Brian, and I'm playing Jemmer Tolep, the Rigelian chief engineer. Tolep, noted. All right, and with that, we're going to run the intro and then jump on into things. And welcome back. So, Captain, I believe today you have an opening monologue for us, so take it away. Here goes something. All right. <clears throat> Captain's Log, Stardate 88608.5. It's my first entry as commanding officer of a Starfleet Federation starship. Even as I say it now and as I enter this log, it, it does not feel real. I've worked long and hard to attain my own command, and as a first officer aboard two other starships, both the USS Arcadia B and the USS Brandenburg, I know the toll that leadership and command can have on a person. I am confident, though, that with the help of my newly appointed and based on their files, extremely competent crew, we will boldly go into the unknown, the new, and return safely. The journey aboard the USS Arcadia C to reach the Narendirara station was a bit longer than I had hoped. A warp core malfunction waylaid us for the better part of three days, and I am embarrassed to say showed an impatient side of me that I had not seen in years. However, we arrived at the station with no other setbacks. The Matahari, named for a spy from Earth's history, is a marvel of a ship. She's outfitted, outfitted with the latest sensor, phaser, and even to my surprise, a cloaking device. I wonder what my Klingon cadet mate would have said to that. Alas, space is a dangerous place, and we will never know his thoughts on the matter. My first order as captain has been to call a meeting of the senior staff aboard the Mata. I'm eager to meet my new family and the team that I will be leading. Most of all, I am curious to know more of our engineering officer, Lieutenant Commander Tolap. For with a ship like the Mata, he will indeed have his work cut out for him. End log. Very good. And just as a point of order, it's uh, Narendra Station. Narendra. I, I was You're really fine. afraid I was going to butcher it, and then I did. Yeah, it yeah. happens. All I right. Guess. 
So to sort of give you a, a view of Narendra Station, uh, I'm going to show you a few things in Roll20 before we get to the senior staff meeting. So uh, first things first is Narendra Station is a very large starbase. Uh, it sits on the edge of Klingon and Federation space uh, far to the galactic east uh, on the other side of Klingon space. And it is a joint Klingon and Federation uh, starbase uh, for a little bit of techno or trekno babble. Um, Narendra 3 was where the Enterprise C uh, defended the colony from Romulan attackers. So Narendra Station is sort of a living memorial to the cooperation and well being of the Klingon Federation sort of alliance. Um, so there's all manner of ships here, trade, uh, civilian, Starfleet, even a few birds of prey. Um, but I did want to show you one other thing before the senior staff meeting, and that is this map of the Shackleton Expanse. Now, as you can see, you guys are currently located at E4 at Narendra Station, and I've already gone ahead and put a few things on there. Uh, for example, the world of Zalda, where Starbase 123 is. And basically what's going to happen is as you guys explore the Shackleton Expanse, is I will be adding sort of things in like, hey, this location here was where you found this, or this location here is where you got attacked. Things of that nature. Um, so basically, if you're ever wondering where you are in the universe, just ask and I'll throw us on the screen. But... Uh, as the captain has requested, we are going to start with a senior staff meeting. Now, as a bit of a primer, the deck one of the Mata Hari is different from what you would expect to see on a Starfleet vessel. Uh, normally for Starfleet, you would have sort of the bridge and then coming off of it is the ready room. There's probably one or two turbo lifts. For the Mata Hari, you're actually mid-decks. You're not at the top deck. You are nestled at the center of the vessel. And what you're seeing is not the standard Starfleet bridge. Instead, it is a wide open space where in the middle there is a hollow table and a hollow screen, uh, which is surrounded by tactical stations, navigation stations, ops, and other sort of stations that would provide different functions. Um, so it's, it's a new bridge. It's a new style of bridge. It's something new to try out. Um, but connected to the CIC is your senior staff conference room. And I'm going to throw everybody's token, uh, down here into the conference room, but feel free to go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Captain Malik Javan. I will be your commanding officer aboard the Matahari. I just want to first and foremost say that it is an absolute honor and a pleasure to be here with you all today. Um, as I'm sure you have seen, uh, having stepped aboard this vessel, we are aboard a marvel of modern technology. Uh, and it may seem a little funny to say that, but um, I'd like us all just to take a moment to go around the room, introduce ourselves. I believe um, Commander... It was it was uh, Commander uh, Rayon. Am I saying that right? Oh, uh, easy enough to make mis mistake to make, Captain. Uh, Majorans, we get that a lot. Uh, unlike most starfaring species, uh, we uh, have our family name first and our uh, given name second. So that would be Commander Commander Jaro. Commander uh, Jaro, my my humblest apologies. As you can see. And to be completely candid with you, I'm I'm a bit nervous. This is indeed my first command, so forgive me. Well, no, no, no offense taken, and uh, well, congratulations, Captain. Thank you. Well, the captain has uh, done uh, has helped me out by sort of kicking off my introduction. I'm uh, I'm Commander Jaro Rayon, uh, and uh, I am also very excited and pleased to meet all of you. Although. Um, as I give each of you a beaming smile, I do falter just a little bit when I see my uh, my uh, new Cardassian intelligence officer before before returning to my easygoing demeanor. 
Um, I am going to glance over at um, our security officer and give you a nod. Howdy, Captain. <laughs> a, a, a slight introduction would be a warranted, I suppose. <laughs> um, I'm Lieutenant Commander Jennings. I'm your chief of security. <clears throat> Not really one for talking like this uh, on the spotlight, sir. Completely understandable. You'll you'll get to know me more as we uh, as we interact together as a crew and as a senior staff. Um, I'm one for family. Family comes first, and I think of my crew as my family. Both of my previous commands as first officer, I became very close with everyone, including the captain. So my only hope is that uh, we too shall grow together uh, as we uh, as we proceed forward together. And maybe you'll even open up. I won't require it, but. Uh, Maybe we'll even learn if you have a, a last name at some point. It'll be fantastic, but we'll see. <laughs> I'll look over at the uh, science officer and give you a nod. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Jensen. Uh, just very excited to be on one of the most state-of-the-art ships I've ever seen. What do you make of her so far? Uh, from what I make... Uh, this is the best technology that Starfleet's ever put out. Um, and I can't wait to see what we can make her do. I'm looking forward to putting her through her, uh, through her initial excursion, as it were. It should be quite mm -hmm. fun. I don't know if you're aware, but she is equipped with a cloaking device. Um, so I'm very excited to, uh, to test out that technology, if I may be so bold as to say. <laughs> Actually, Captain, very... I got a question about that. Please. <laughs> uh, can you explain the legality of that? Um... I don't like to get into politics uh, personally. If Perfect, it was, me uh, it was my if it was my choice, um, I like to experience life, and I believe that life is full of experiences, and we will be experiencing the ability to disappear from sensors and visual contact, which will be very exciting. I think so. You're from Riza, mind. right? What's that? You're from Riza, right? Indeed. Yes. <laughs> We're all about experience, <laughs> and having a good time. So there you are. You're right, Captain. Circle. I think we're going to get along pretty well. Oh, we're going to have a great time. It's going to be that great. was a that was a fantastic dodge, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I do think Lieutenant Commander Jennings' question does stand and will need to be answered eventually. I mean, I feel like I could do my job better if I knew what my mandate was. Our mandate is always as uh, as the Starfleet General Orders, uh, the prime directive is to not interfere with any other cultures. And as if we're invisible, then we'll be doing the least amount of interfering that I can think. But that's just my opinion. If I might add something to that. So something I forgot to mention during the opening monologue is that the Matahari is set in 2411. So Star Trek Online era. And you guys are sort of sharing the same universe as the Fenrir game. Um, but what matters for you all is that since you are in 2411, the initial sort of accords with the Romulans that prevented Starfleet from having cloaking devices, that's gone. So you guys are in the clear with your cloaking device. Because that government doesn't exist anymore. Correct. That's right. <laughs> mm. I don't believe their planet exists anymore. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's kind of gone. Oh, is that now? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, a few years ago, but yeah. Oh, I thought that was later on. Okay. Yeah, I think right. Hobus, Hobus was 2387. Uh, Either way, it's been at least a decade. Sure. Anyways, carry on. Yes, officer. Uh, Captain, I believe I might be able to shed some light on the legality of our cloaking device. Please. As chief engineer, I have done my research. It turns out the Kittimer Accords were with the Romulan government. And they don't exist anymore. So, legal. <laughs> I'm actually glad you mentioned that. I was going to ask you later in private to perhaps explain the legality. And one thing I've learned as a first officer aboard a starship is that it is not everything that I know, but the intelligence that I can surround myself with a competent crew. I've looked at all of your files, um, and I am incredibly impressed with the service record that I've seen from all of you. And I'm, I'm excited to add to that service record with you as my crew and aboard the Matahari. I believe based on the directives that we have from Starfleet, we will be together for quite some time. And as long as there is no mm, 
uncomfortableness between us. I give a glance at the first officer <laughs> and the other gentleman. <laughs> um, then I think that this will be a long standing crew. Um, together we are, as I mentioned, a family. And I've always been of the, um, of the thought that self-preservation, so protecting ourselves, our interests, and the interests of Starfleet is not a self-centered idea, but one that we should hold dear to our hearts. And your, ex your advancements as, as officers is something that will be very important to me and is important to me. Um, and something that I wish for you as we develop and move forward together to, to share with me. I want you to know that as, as, a, as a captain, I plan to be very open. My door will be open to all of you and to the crew. Um, not just my senior staff. I'd want to be seen as approachable. And that is the reason I called this meeting here today, uh, so that we'd all have a chance to get to know each other and discuss our thoughts, our feelings, and really our goals for how we want to run this starship. Because as you all know, as you've served aboard other starships, this is our home, and we have to keep our home in order. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. I'm one for talking. I apologize. I should be quiet now and let someone else take the floor. <laughs> I realize I'm the captain. Language. I don't want to take over everything. I apologize. If, if flowery <laughs> language is a prerequisite, I will never sit in that seat. <laughs> I think well, there's I one of our senior staff who hasn't had a chance to introduce themselves. Yet. Yes, I do believe that is my pleasure now. I am your intelligence liaison, Lieutenant Commander Prawl. Hmm. It is nice to be serving aboard a vessel again it's been a number of years since i've been waylaid on a station it'll be nice to stretch your legs again i assume they've put me on a decent ship for it <laughs> i like your modesty that's good i uh i think we'll get along quite well perhaps <laughs> well as you said we're one family indeed well, I have a few uh, requests here. Um, engineering officer, I would like a rundown of the ship systems, make sure that everything is fully operational. I believe there's just a few odds and ends to square away. Um, last I checked, uh, give me one moment to pull it up. All right, I just want to ensure that the uh, you, fo uh, you focus the uh, multiphasic spatial displacement relay before we leave, um, it's very important. Uh, that is a important system when it comes to the cloaking device, which I'll want to test out as soon as we uh, leave the station. Can you ensure that that's done? Yes, Captain. Excellent. All right, Intelligence Officer, um, I would like you to uh, meet me in my ready room for a quick briefing um, on our first mission. Um, yes, and then everyone else, please report to your respective stations um, and ensure that we are ready for departure from the station. Understood? Yes, Aye. sir. Thank you. Carry on. Yes, sir. Dismissed. All right. So as you all filter out to your stations, feel free to move your tokens along. I've tried to label uh, most of where your stations should be. Um, but uh, of note, waiting for you all at navigation. Like obviously, if you're not at your station, the stations are filled with red shirts, unnamed personnel that you know give way when you come to sit down. Um, but of interest to you all is the um, crimson-haired, almost black crimson-haired, uh, ensign that sits at navigation and the navigation station is a large curved console with several seats behind it now the ensign is sort of your yeoman captain um, she is sort of your um, hey captain a communication is coming in hey captain this is happening um, and as you step out onto the the full floor of the command information center uh, what happens is ensign raven speaks up and says uh, Captain, we are getting a hail from the station's admiral, uh, Admiral Hamasi. Uh, bring it up on screen, please. Very good, sir. And what happens is above the hollow table that sits in the center of the space, uh, what happens is a image of a Cation woman uh, appears. Now, as a primer for anyone who does not remember what a Cation is, uh, Cations are sort of a cat-like species um, that have uh, very, shall we say, interesting sort of cultural developments. Uh, Hamasi in particular, uh, she is black-furred, uh, has sort of this wavy, long black hair, and an aperitif that sits in her uh, left side of her hair. And as she appears on the, or above the hollow table, she looks around and says, Oh, 
This is uh, quite interesting to see it from this angle. Uh, mm -hmm. How are you doing, Captain? Is everything to your satisfaction so far? I could not be more impressed with the sophistication of this ship. We have just uh, had our first meeting as a, a senior staff, and uh, we are preparing the Matahari for departure. Um, what can I help you with today, if I may ask? I wasn't expecting a communique from you. Well, uh, I'm here to tell you that we are going to be cutting your shakedown crew short. We've detected a subspace shockwave coming from a nearby gravimetric anomaly, and we would like the Matahari to go check it out. Well, that's one way to shake down a starship, if I may be so bold as to say. Indeed. I know there was supposed to be a whole ceremony later with the whole breaking of a bottle on the hull and such other Earth traditions, but you may consider this your permission to depart. Excellent. Uh, we'll make a few final diagnostics and system checks, and we'll head out immediately. Um, could you please transfer the location of the anomaly to my science officer and navigation? She looks off screen, nods. And sure enough, uh, both the science officer and Ensign Raven confirm that you have a set of coordinates. Excellent. Ensign Raven, what is the uh, distance to the anomaly? Uh, looks like we will be in warp for approximately 12 hours, sir. Excellent. All right, crew, um, prepare the Matahari for departure. Um, please uh, make your final systems checks. Um, and Raven, once you hear back from every station, please take us out. Yes, sir. So, as part of our first official on-screen rolling, uh, let's see, Mr. Jensen, I would like you to roll me a reason and a science, and this will be at a difficulty of zero. Reason, science... You can tell a lot about a role-playing game by the first roll. Don't mess it up. No. <laughs> <laughs> you already rolled. Yeah, oh my gosh, is... you're right, and I succeeded. Okay, we're good. This is going to be great. Nothing yeah, bad is going to happen camera, to us ever. So. Oh, that's true. All right. <laughs> All right. So here goes nothing. All right. Very nice. That is two successes. The difficulty was zero, so you get two momentum. Woo. So, Jensen... And usually I'll do a handout for this, but for sort of first session, I just thought I'd explain uh, instead of giving you a handout. Um, Jensen, what you know is that a subspace shockwave is something that travels faster than light. And a big uh, sort of instance of a subspace shockwave would be back when the Klingon moon Praxis exploded. Um, if you remember, I believe that was what, Generations? Um, basically, yes. it's... It's an explosion that shouldn't be happening naturally, is what I'm driving at. Okay. So I'd like to relay that to the captain. Captain, we're detecting a subspace wave. Uh, and uh, it's traveling at the faster than the speed of light. Is this something naturally occurring? Or would there be something else that could have created it? Based on all the science we know, it uh, nothing natural can... Uh, create these kind of waves. How close would we, would we have to be to get a full sensor sweep of the location where it emanated from? Would I know that? You would. Feel free to make it up. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, make it up. I'm... <laughs> uh, we would have to be within let's see, uh, 100,000 kilometers. Okay. I think we can manage that. Um, Helm? Uh, please set a course for 100,000 kilometers from the location of the subspace anomaly, or subspace shockwave, excuse me. And when you're ready, please take us out at warp three. Very Is good, there, sir. Uh, think, Captain? Yes. Just uh, a, I that, understand it. That, um, that we need to prepare in terms of uh, our shield frequencies or, or such to ensure that we're safe from science? That, from that anomaly? I'll defer to our science officer. Uh, it would be prudent. Uh, we can use some of the historical records that we've retained from some of these shockwaves in the past to make appropriate modifications. Um, uh, one of the most historical records was the destruction of Praxis. Mm. Okay. Um, quick question out of character. Which mm -hmm. station would set the frequency for 
shields. Would it be tactical? That would be tactical. Okay, not to sound like an idiot. It's my first time as a captain. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> tactical. <laughs> Please modify the phase variance for our shields to match um, the frequency of the Praxis explosion. Um, Aye, Captain. And we'll take it from there. Thank you, First Officer. That was very good advice. I'm glad to have you aboard. Never hurts to be too careful. Indeed. Anyone else have any other information to share before we head out? I just believe Starfleet regulation would insist that we use only maneuvering thrusters while leaving the station. Yes, correct. Take us out with maneuvering thrusters, and once we're clear of the station, warp three. If you can't tell everyone, I'm a little nervous. This is new to me. Sorry. <laughs> I make a nervous laugh and then like sort of like put my hands on the console like awkwardly like all right we're gonna be fine oh god <laughs> and, uh, please don't get everyone killed <laughs> I think you're doing just fine captain thank you all right uh, but yeah Ensign Raven just sort of smiles and says well captain I was planning to just warp out of Naringer station <laughs> you know, sort of burn or buzz the flight deck. But uh, yeah, I got you. Maneuvering thrusters. That's one way to smash a bottle over the uh, over the ship's hull. <laughs> so a main we, voyage uh... flyby. <laughs> so what we see is we sort of cut to an external shot of Narendra Station, and one of the large doors opens up. And coming out of the station on maneuvering thrusters is the Matahari. Now, I don't think we've mentioned it at this point, but the Matahari is an eclipse, cra eclipse class intelligence cruiser, meaning that it is, as the captain and the rest of the crew have alluded to, it is a very state-of-the-art system, a new design for Starfleet. Um, so you have interesting things going aboard. Um, but uh, as you get away from the station and eventually jump to warp, I would like there to be a very important role, and it's going to fall to Mr. Jennings. So, Mr. Jennings, you are going to be modulating the shields. And what this means is you are going to be rolling a control and a security. And the ship will assist you with a structure and engineering. So, someone will need to get the ship's roll. Uh, the ship always has a focus. And since the ship is assisting, by default, all assisting, whether it's a ship, a character, whatever, they roll one die instead of the two. I can roll for the ship if. Okay. Uh, Go for it. Now, this so, is a difficulty of two, and you do have two momentum. So you may wish to buy additional dice, or you could let fate decide, really. you please just remind me of what the ship is rolling? The ship is rolling a structure and an engineering. Cool. Structure... All right, well, hey, that's two successes already for the Mata Hari. Very nice. I love this ship. <laughs> and I love my first officer so far. <laughs> make, me, make me look good. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. Uh, the other thing I would say is that if you don't know if you have a focus or not, just uh, run a focus by me, and if I think it applies, I'll usually let you have it. Nice. Yeah, Mr. Jennings, let's see that control security. You want to walk me through that one? Sure. So you're going to click either the control or the security on your character sheet. And then it's going to pop up a dialogue box and ask you some questions. Sorry, what was it? Control or Se uh, control and security? Oh, okay, it's control. Dice pool one d twenty. Two d twenty, unless you would like to buy additional dice with momentum. Do I have any momentum? You have two at the moment. Sure, we'll seize one. Okay, so you will be rolling three d twenty then. All right. Uh, I don't think. All right. That is a grand total of four successes, which means you get two momentum back. I believe that puts you at three. So, uh, Jennings, you correctly modify the shields. You modulate them. And not a moment too soon, because maybe about 
15, 20 minutes out of uh, Stardock, the subspace shockwave does hit the Matahari. Now, the good news is that Raven, your uh, helm officer, did think to steer you into the wave, and that this isn't going to be tremendously hard on the ship. But I'm still going to roll some challenge dice, challenge dice here to see how things happen. So, uh, I'm going to be rolling this many challenge die. Okay. So, what this means is that uh, this is what is called a, a damage roll. Basically, whenever we roll damage or something that requires challenge die, we use this macro to sort of roll specialty dice. Um, and the faces are one, two, two blanks or zeros, and then two that are one plus effect. And the effect is important because certain talents, certain weapon types, those all play into that effect. So what happens here is that as the shockwave hits the Matahari, um, all of the lights on the bridge or the CIC dim and sort of uh, spark as Telep, you're noticing that there is a noticeable power loss on the port nacelle, the upper port nacelle. Captain, we appear to have taken damage from the wave. Status report. I have a noticeable power loss from upper left nacelle. Can it be repaired? Uh, I will run a diagnostic. All right. Please. So you, Telep, are going to be rolling a daring or control plus engineering, and this will be a difficulty of two. Oops. Yes. Um, I would also like to spend a momentum to gain a third dice, just in case. Sure. Did everyone gain momentum or just... So momentum is a group pull, a group gotcha. pool. So you okay. all can pull for momentum, whatever you want. Nice. And we see um, given the momentum somewhere? Uh, you should have the three at the moment. It it's shows as a token above everyone's portrait on roll 20. Mm -hmm. um, may I apply my warp field dynamic focus? You certainly may. Excellent. Two successes is all you need. Yeah, it's easy enough for That's you true. to reroute some power, get the nacelle working just fine again. Nice. Sorry, I'm just... Uh -oh. How do I delete in Rolls 20? Uh, literally the delete button on your keyboard. Oh. D easier than I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, Captain... Uh... The diagnostic has showed that it is easily repaired, and so I repaired it. Excellent. Well done, engineering. And Commander Tolop, uh, thus far, I'm very impressed. That was a lot, not as worse as, not as bad as it could have been, I suppose. Carry on. Helm, um, any other sh any other secondary shockwaves we should be aware of? Or I would actually defer to probably science for that. Can we uh, scan ahead and see if there's any secondary shockwaves we should be aware of? Uh, yes, we can. All right. So, Jensen, you're going to be rolling a reason and a science. Uh, the ship will assist you with a sensors science. The and I have, I have a focus of sensor operation as well. Yep, that'll definitely apply. So you nice. said reason science? Mm-hmm. And the difficulty here will be a two, but... The Matahari has advanced sensor suites, which means that difficulty drops to a one. Let's go. I love this thing. <laughs> I just check yes to focus. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And uh, if someone could get the ship's sensors and science, please. Oh, I can do that again. First officer. <laughs> <laughs> and science. And it always rolls with the focus, right? Correct. Okay. Got it. All right. So no help from the ship, but uh, Jensen still gets four successes. 
which means you get two momentum. Or no, sorry, three momentum. So you're at five. So what you're noticing, Jensen, is there are some residual sort of aftershocks, but nothing that would actually cause problems like the initial wave hit. So, Captain, we have a couple of small aftershocks, but nothing near as uh, impactful as what we just experienced. Excellent. Tactical or shields holding? Uh, yes, Captain. Excellent. Helm, um, continue on. Uh, please increase to warp five. I'd like to get to the source of the explosion a little bit quicker than uh, than we were originally uh, expecting. Let's also let's put the ship through a, a few uh, a few of her paces and see how fast we can get her going. Sir, I could probably push it to warp 9.975 if you really wanted to. Engage. Spicy. Right. <laughs> so the uh, Mata Hari accelerates even faster through space. It is going almost full tilt. But as all that's happening, Mr. Prawl, our yep. intelligence officer, I would like you to roll me a reason and a security, please. The difficulty on this will be a one, and you would have a focus. Very nice. That is a grand total of three successes, which means you get uh, two momentum back. So uh, what this means, and the reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to see if we could hit cap. So again, you can keep up to six momentum, and past that you have what is called floating momentum. And what happens with floating momentum is if you do not use it on the roll, it just sort of vanishes, goes away. But Prawl, the reason you did this is because you wanted to check in with Starfleet Intelligence, see what is maybe in the area you're going to. And what you learn is that there is indeed a gravimetric anomaly, or in other words, a black hole. But, again, there's nothing that would be around the black hole that would cause the subspace shockwave. Now, normally at this point, if you had additional questions, you would spend momentum to ask additional questions. And since you have one floating, you could spend your floating momentum to ask me a question. And what I would say about that is that I have to answer truthfully. I can't do like the GMing thing of maybe um, unless it would seriously break the story kind of a thing. So it, it's kind of a way for you to get a feel for the situation. So let's say, for example, you do spend that floating momentum. What would your question be? Do we have any sensor logs of any Starship traffic in the area? You do. And what you find is the last ship that was through this area was approximately a week ago. It was a Ferengi trading vessel. And they just sort of passed right by the anomaly. Uh, did not note, of, note anything of significance. Okay. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn to the captain. I believe you wanted to have a briefing, sir. Yes. Um, crew, I'm going to have a briefing with my intelligence officer here for a few moments. Um, please uh, inform me of any uh, anomalies or additional shock waves. Um, science, please continue scans ahead of the ship. Helm, take us down to warp five. Uh, let's not push the ship too hard, but it's good to know she can get where she's going if need be. Aye, sir. Aye, sir. Uh, step Aye. away with my intelligence officer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, where is the, where is, is the, the red office area? is yours. Yep. Wow. That's so big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so <cool. laughs> Sit down and kind of stretch out a little bit and you're like, wow, this is, these, these chairs are nice. Wow. <laughs> really went all out on this. The leather is just, uh, oh, hello. Welcome. <laughs> I'm going to extend my hand to you, uh, in a handshake. Um, reach out, shake back. Absolutely. It is a nice office, sir. I I must say I'm quite impressed. I believe it's a little little gray and bleak right now. It definitely could use a little bit of color. Um, are you are you hungry? Do you want something to drink? A tea? A uh, coffee? No, sir. I'm good. All right. Do well, you... I'm going to have a glass of 
uh, there's a, a drink on Earth that I had at one point at Academy. It was a, it was a red wine. Uh, would you care to try one? No, I think I'll just abstain from that for now. Just, just, just one. Come on, humor me, please. Fine. Excellent. Just, just I, one. I like you. I like you. I'm gonna replicator. Uh, please synthesize two uh, sweet red wines. So the replicator hums to life and begins begins materializing something, but it's not the red wine you asked for. It is two bowls of gah. Huh. I don't think that's what you asked for. No, it wasn't. Um, computer, synthesize two glasses of red wine. More gah. <laughs> Try asking for gah. <laughs> computer, synthesize two bowls of gah. So this time, you get a chocolate sundae. Interesting. <laughs> I think we may have a problem. <sighs> We'll deal with that later. I wanted to speak with you for a few moments. Um, I didn't see much information in your file about the reasoning behind why you were waylaid on the station for so long. Tell me a little bit more about your last command or your last posting on a starship. What happened? My previous posting was on a Bellerophon class vessel. Anything more than that, I'm not at liberty to tell you at this moment. Interesting. I have one question, and it is yes. something that is very important to me, and, and I hope you do not take it with a degree of any disrespect. Can I trust you? As, a, as you said before, this crew is to be a family, correct? That is my intention. One of the greatest strengths of the Cardassians is the way we treat family. It is the most important thing to us. I'm very glad to hear that. I will not ask any further questions, but I do hope as we work together, both you and myself can open up to one another and be closer as, as colleagues and as a family. I appreciate your forthright and willingness to meet with me. In the meantime, could you please let engineering know that there appears to be something wrong with the replicators? I will do that. First, I would like to inform you, I did take the liberty of checking with Starfleet Intelligence. There is a gravimetric anomaly where we're headed. A black hole? Yes, sir. Is there anything else in the area that we were aware of? From the information I found out, there is nothing else there currently. So what would cause a subspace shockwave? Science? Yes, sir. Is there anything um, in the records about black holes giving off subspace shock waves or releasing energy versus sucking them in? If you could do a little bit of research, please get back to me on that. Um, I've just found out from our intelligence officer that where we're heading, there is a subspace anomaly, a black hole. And I'd like to see all information um, at the command station when I return uh, shortly that you can gather. Hi, sir. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with me. Is there anything else you know about where we're heading to? The only other bit of information I was able to gather, approximately a week ago, there was a Ferengi trading vessel passing through the area. But from what I could what see... Carrying? I don't, but from the records I could see, that is the last bit of interstellar traffic. Hmm. Interesting. And somewhat disconcerting. Let me know if you gather any more information about the area and see if you can see if you can figure out which trading vessel it was and raise them on um, long range communique. I would like to get any information from their captain that they may have had or any of their sensor scans uh, in the area and uh, get that before we arrive um, at the source of the anomaly. Of course, I'll attempt to figure out what I can. Excellent. And please don't forget to speak to engineering. I. I really could use a glass of wine. I'll go ahead and take care of that right now. Thank you. I'm going to take a moment to settle into my office and let the crew know I'll be returning to the bridge shortly. Yes, sir. With that, I'll head out and head down to engineering. Okay. So, as uh, Prawl does that, 
Uh, Mr. Jaro, why that conversation's going on? Uh, Ensign Raven reports, uh, sir, we're getting a hail. Hail? On screen. Audio only, sir. Uh, well, uh oh, you're roboting. Oh. Captain. Shake it off. Orders. Shake it off. Shake it off, man. You're uh, roboting. Sorry. The captain's office. All right. Now we can hear you again. Uh, sorry. You're fine. Uh, you can hear me again? Yes. Cool. Um, I was just requesting that she uh, batch it through and that she uh, also batch it through to the captain's office. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit funny for the captain, but on the bridge, uh, what happens is a screech, almost like the sound of tire uh, against asphalt, like someone doing a burnout. And mixed with it is almost like an inhuman sort of yowl, uh, what you might expect to hear from a large cat on Earth. So those of you in the CIC, you're ready for this. Like, oh, okay, there, this horrible sound has happened. For the captain, you are literally just sort of settling in, and all of a sudden the speakers in your office just begin blaring this ungodly wail. I spill my bowl of grok. I'm sorry. What in the blazes? Turn Bridge. it off. What was that? What's going on? Did, does she turn it off? Yeah, she like, turns it off. Yeah. Sorry, right, sir. Captain. We were receiving a we were receiving a hail, and I thought you might want to uh, be on the call. What was the source of the hail? Ensign Raven looks at her screen for a moment. Uh, where we're going, sir? Disconcerting. Um, can we? What information do we have? Science. Uh... Well, did we get a recording of the uh, of, of what just happened? Mm -hmm. uh, science. Could we? Uh, could we get anything out of that other than other than the screen? Uh, could we? Uh, Scan it through our computers, see if it matches. Let's say, anything. can we? Yeah, I was going to run it through the analysis right now. Mm -hmm. Let's make a roll of it. Match. Okay. Uh, so, what I would say is that since Telep is here, uh, he can assist you on this because this also is somewhat engineering related. Cool. So, uh, Jensen, you're going to be rolling a control and a science. Okay. Telep, you're going to be rolling mm -hmm. a control engineering. And since you're assisting, you would be rolling one die. And then the ship, the Mata Hari, will assist you with a computers and a science. Can I use my computer's focus? You certainly can. I was going to say, can I, I have a computer's focus as well? <laughs> now, what I would say I is that the difficulty here is a five, which means you need five successes to succeed. Uh, I, I would like to use a momentum as well on this one then. Okay. Now, how much momentum do you want to spend? It is one momentum for three dice, hmm. a total of three momentum for four dice, or six momentum for five dice. Uh, thoughts? I recommend you go at least four. I'd say go all in. Let's figure out what this is. Okay, so we're going to use all six momentum that we have stored up? Absolutely. Let's do it. Um, may I just ask, like, I think this would be a good clarification on the order of operations. Mm -hmm. So, like, we know the ship is assisting. Mm -hmm. Does the ship roll first? Can we see how many successes we get off of that? Decide, should we decide everything, like what momentum we're using first? Yeah, I would say that, we... and that's a good question. I would say that uh, for the spirit of the rolling, um, decide how much momentum is being spent before any rolling occurs. I think so, that that's absolutely fair. Yeah. Okay. So if we're spending six momentum, we get how many extra dice? Just so you three. are going to be rolling five total dice, Jensen. Okay. Okay. And so that's that. Uh, here goes I, 
I'll go ahead and roll for the ship again. Okay. Okay. Now this is interesting because you've only scored three successes here. So you have the option of doing something special. Special. I can do English today. You could do something <laughs> cool. Uh, so Jensen, uh, uh -huh. this is an opportunity where you could use your determination. Oh. Now, what determination is, is it's a special sort of like a, a fate point or a uh, an inspiration in D&D, &D, okay. which allows you to re-roll dice. And what I would say is that in order to use determination for a roll, you have to apply a value. So do you have any values that would apply to this situation? I have every problem has a solution. I would allow that to happen. And okay. what that means is you can reroll as many of your dice as you would wish. So probably the three failures. <laughs> probably a good idea. Yeah. Legit. Okay. okay, so that was control science. And I'm going to roll 3d20. Mm -hmm. Now, can I ask a quick question here? Sure. I was under the impression with the value spend, you could also spend it to get two automatic critical successes. Yes, and that is something I neglected to say, and that's on me. Um, if you spend your determination prior to any rolling being done, you essentially get another die that has already mm -hmm. rolled a once. So you start with two successes. Oh, okay. Um, but determination is important because you only get one point every session. Now, there are ways to get more determination. For example, the captain, as sort of his captain ability, can give you his point of determination to use as long as he is in communication with you. Um, the main way of getting determination back, though, is by challenging a value, meaning you take a look at a value and you say, maybe this current situation is making me think that this isn't a value that my character would follow anymore. Um, so it doesn't really happen here because you have these five successes you need, but something to keep in mind that if you've run out of determination, start looking at your values and think, what can I do to get, you know, can I challenge this? Um, but where this is going is you got six successes, so you get one momentum back and the audio begins playing again, this time in a language that everyone would understand. Um, again, it is very high-pitched, but it's not the um, terrible wailing that it was before. And the message says the following. This is the USS Ralma. We are experiencing an engine failure. Please, to any vessels in the area, we require assistance. And part of your rolling is you were able to determine that this signal was from a Miranda class vessel and that this vessel is not from your time. It is from the 2300s, which means the sort of quote unquote lost era between original series and the next generation. So this is essentially a ship out of time. What is it doing here? All right, so I will relay this information to the first officer and the captain who is listening in, uh, mm -hmm. what I've learned. So the message is from a ship from the 2300s. Uh, it does appear to be stuck in our time. And, well, uh, so... But but this is a contemporaneous message, right? This isn't a a message that because no the message yeah the message audience. originated from our time, okay. so the ship is here. What do we know about this vessel? That's a good question. Well, I think that is an excellent uh, thing for our uh, either our engineer or our intelligence officer. So just I will go ahead and make a roll for it. Okay. See what I can find on the service history of this vessel. Okay. For you, I'd like you to roll me an insight and a command. 
And the difficulty on this will be a one. I'm just going to do it. Would my investigation focus work? It most definitely would. Okay, now this is good because it lets me explain some more things. Uh Uh-oh. So, you've acquired (laughs) the one success you need. However, you have also rolled a complication. Now, complications can be handled in one of three ways. The first is that you keep the complication, meaning that I introduce some form of a negative consequence or some form of difficulty to the current situation. Option two is you decide to give me two threat, meaning I get more threat. Option three is to spend two momentum and get rid of the complication. So what would you like to do in this situation? Would you like to keep the complication or spend it with threat? Let's keep the complication. Okay. So what you find, Mr. Prawl, is that the USS Ralma has been missing in action for the last 150 years. I think I did that math right. It's at least 100 years. Wow. Um, So I have a question. Mm -hmm. Out of character. When you say the 2300s, do you mean the 23rd century? Because that would be the... Timeline wise, that's the span of time. Because if it's twenty four eleven, I think so it would I did be the twenty two hundreds, right? Yeah. So I think I did that right. Uh, good question. Basically, it lines up with the timeline. It's not like oh, this Miranda's hopping through time. Uh, right. It, so it's from the twenty two hundreds or the twenty third century, mm-hmm. and we're currently in the twenty fifth. Correct. Excellent. Cool. So what my records are showing, this vessel's been declared missing for at least the last hundred years. Where was it last seen? What I would say is that it was last seen in the Alpha Quadrant. So literally on the opposite side of the galaxy from where you are now. The opposite side of the galaxy and over 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, if we were shaking down this crew, this is a shakedown. Um, Intel, please bring up all information you know about this vessel, its capabilities, its crew, any information you can gather, and have it at the command station. I'll be returning to the bridge shortly. Yes, sir. So, not to leave uh, Jennings and Tolep out here, two things happen at once on the bridge. Jennings, you get a security report. And the report is that the hollow emitters on deck three have manifested a large group of Targ. And then, Mr. Tolep, what you're seeing is an incoming message from an Ensign Martinez. All right, pull it up. So Martinez uh, at your station says, "Uh, Sir, this is Ensign Martinez. Are we supposed to have a warp core that glows green? Uh, n- no, Ensign, that is a, that is a definitely not the color we should have. Well, it's very green, sir. Explanation? We have none, but we are running as many scans as we can. <laughs> uh, Captain? This is Toleop from Engineering? Yes, Toleop. One of our warp cars has turned green. What do you mean green? Well, so color is a function of the the wave fronts from light hitting the iris of your eye. Yes, Tolep, I know what color is, but what do you mean that our warp core is green? (laughs) Um, I have reported all the information that has been provided to me. Please head down to engineering and give me a status report as soon as you get there. Aye, Captain. Uh, Captain, this is Lieutenant Commander Jennings. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Jennings. I'm going to need about five minutes. Uh, permission to leave the bridge? Permission granted. Meet me in my ready room. Oh, wait. No. Sorry. You're going somewhere else to do a thing. Hey, Gary. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Completely misunderstood. Uh, uh, permission granted. Please give me a status report. Attaboy. All right. 
wait. So hold 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 on. Uh, uh, I I know the captain just granted you permission to leave, but uh, could you could you please let me know uh, what's what's the matter? If there's a security concern. Oh no, it's concern, Captain. We just have a bit of an infestation. I'm gonna go deal with personally. An infestation on, <laughs> yes, on board. Yes, sir. Targs actually. Cling on. Don't worry. I've dealt with these before. There, there are targs on the ship. I cap or commander. How did they? How did they? Yeah, well, yes. Go go deal with that. But uh, we may we may need to have a chat about uh, uh, about your communication style. Uh, That's fair, commander. <laughs> Commander. Commander. Yes. Speaking of communication, uh, I am leaving the bridge to go to engineering. <laughs> I think it was established why that. Ah, oh, this is this is this is going to be complicated, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> Th thank you, sir. All right. All right, so first things first, we're actually going to deal with the problem in main engineering. So uh, engineering, if you will imagine, it's a standard warp core for the uh, 25th century. Uh, nice and uh, sleek design, but uh, unlike what you may be seeing on the screen at the moment, things are not glowing blue. In fact, the entire sort of engineering bay is covered in a green light. And there's a gaggle of uh, engineers sort of walking around the core and vigorously scanning the core with their tricorders. And uh, as you walk in, uh, Mr. Tolep, uh, what you find is that there is Ensign Martinez waiting for you. Now, Ensign Martinez uh, is a Hispanic gentleman. Um, he is probably fresh out of the academy. And he sort of turns to you and says... Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, we haven't been able to discern why it's glowing green. And I'm going to spend two threat that as he says that, it shifts color again. It's now yellow. Hmm. Well, Ensign, you no longer need to worry about the warp core being green. So there's good news. To lay up to Captain. Captain. The warp core has shifted color to yellow. I will keep you updated. To lay up out. <laughs> All right. So to lay up, uh, roll me a either a reason or an insight plus engineering. This will be a difficulty of three. But because you are the chief engineer in main engineering, that becomes a difficulty of two. Excellent. Uh, will my focus of warp field dynamics apply? It most certainly will. Excellent. Well, then I shan't spend our one momentum. Hey, two successes. That's all you need. So you spot the problem almost immediately. It seems that the way the dilithium crystals are aligned it's causing a visual shift in the antimatter matter reaction. So it's nothing serious. It's just that the dilithium crystals aren't aligned properly. Excellent. I bring Martinez over and, and coach him on alignment of dilithium crystals to establish a stable matrix, which will not shift colors. And Martinez says, uh, of, of course, sir. I don't know why we didn't spot. I'm, I'll do that right away, sir. Thank you. All right. To lay up to Captain. Captain here. Uh, it seems the dilithium matrix was causing a refraction in the warp core. I have solved the problem. I will return to bridge. Agreed. Return to the bridge as soon as it's cleared. Um, was there any damage to the warp core other than the color shift? I'm having Ensign Martinez run a diagnostic as soon as he realigns the matrix, and he will report after I return to the bridge. Acknowledged. All right. So up next, we're going to deal with Mr. Jennings. 
So, Mr. Jennings, if you will use your imagination for a little bit, uh, you arrive on deck three where a security team is doing their damnedest to herd these holographic targ. There's maybe about four or five of them in all. <laughs> Out of character. So he knows these are holographic? Yeah, you do know these are holographic. Um... So they're harmless. Conceivably. Okay. And they're trying to wrangle them into where? Uh, they're just trying to get them all in one location. But as you even walk up to the group of security officers, one targ uh, splits off and leaps at you, Mr. Jennings. So, Mr. Jennings, I need you to roll me a daring, and a security. The difficulty is one. However, this is a contested roll, meaning that I'm going to be rolling for the targ, and okay. you are trying to get more successes than the targ. All right. So I hit, I got control, I hit control, and then I press uh, uh You would security? be hitting daring and security. Oh, daring and security, yep. And if you have hand-to-hand -hand combat, if you have some form of survival as a focus, that would apply here. Uh, I got hand-to-hand -hand combat, maybe phasers and animal handling. Those would all apply. So is that 3d20? Uh, that would be 2d20. You could buy a third dice with the momentum you have. I'm fine with two. Okay. Applicable focus. Yep. Yep. All right. Three successes. A very good roll. Let me roll for the Targ and see how well they do. Uh, I'm going to spend some threat to give them an additional die. Oh, dear. <laughs> so this is important because, again, it's, it's nice the way the dice are falling tonight because it lets me show off certain things of the system. So the Targ has scored three successes as well. And the way contested rolls work is that the actor succeeds in the case of a tie. Okay. So, Jennings, what happens is the Targ, like, you do your best to dodge out of the way, maybe sort of duck low or roll backwards, but the Targ literally jumps on top of you, slamming you to the ground. And I need you... Okay, this is also a good thing. I need you to take five stress of damage. Now, there's two ways you can track stress. Uh, if we have your token on screen, you would just modify the blue bar. Right. But on your character sheet, you would get rid of five dots on your stress track. Now, this is important because five is the magic number in this system when it comes to damage. In ground combat, um, such as this, five damage means an injury. And it, what an injury means is that unless you are taken care of you are essentially out of the scene uh you can also spend momentum and determination to ignore the injury um but in general you take the injury and then you are just sort of sitting on the sidelines uh for this instance though i don't want you to feel like you are being picked on so what i would say is that uh if you give me the one momentum you can stay up and not be injured normally it's a cost of two here you go. All righty. <laughs> so, yeah, the Targ slams you to the ground and knocks the wind out of you. And maybe even you hit the back of your head. You're seeing stars. And now you have a Targ on top of you. What is it you wish to do? Is this, like, can I, you, like, stuff that's on my character sheet? Can I try I to... Really, it's your imagination how you handle this scenario. Okay. I mean, I'm assuming I've, it's, it's in my equipment, so I'd like to use my phaser on it. Okay. That's going to be a control and a security difficulty of two. Uh, so press control, hit security, and how many d20? Just one? Uh, two d20. Oh, two? Okay. Your memorial is going to be really short and sweet. He was a quiet man. Didn't say much. Stoic. 
and applicable focus. Uh, hand, hand phasers, hand, I think. Hand phasers, have. yeah, for sure. Hey, three successes. You get a momentum. Cool. Uh, what is your security score? A five. Uh, roll me eight challenge dice, please. And if you're curious where that macro is, it's yep. the same place as Techno Babble. Oh, right. Okay. Uh... Eight? Yep. All right. And again, five is the magic number here. So you manage to get your phaser out and you shoot it up into the belly of the hollow targ and the hollow matrix destabilizes and the targ literally poofs out of existence. Was that about my memorial? <laughs> <laughs> One hell of uh, a right. shot with a phaser. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I hop up to my feet. Are there more Targs still? Yeah, there's about four remaining. And the security officers, one of them calls over and says, are you all right, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's get the rest of these here angled up. Uh, can I start trying to like, put them into one of the rooms nearby? You could indeed. And what I would say is that uh, for the moment, you have them located on deck three, section two, room alpha. So they're in the room. They're in the room, correct. Okay, then we'll just choose to lock it down. Okay. All right. With that crisis out of the way, I think what we're going to do is we are going to take our 10-minute break. So stick around, stream, or shall I say the recording. We'll be back shortly.
<laughs> All right, and welcome back from the break. We're a little early, but uh, that's because my players are ready and eager to go. So uh, what I would say is that there's a few interesting things that happen during your remaining trek to the black hole. Um, but it's not so much important because eventually you do arrive at the black hole. And what you see on the view screen is the following situation. And for any audio listeners, I will describe it for you. So if you will imagine a black hole, uh, literally a force of gravity so great that light cannot escape, um, it has a accretion disk that allows you to actually see the black hole. So matter and light are falling into it. Uh, sitting around the black hole, though, are two craft. One, you immediately identify as the USS Ralma. The other is unknown. Uh, tactical, shields up. Uh, Captain? Uh, science, uh, scan. Um, give me a systems report and status report of the USS uh, Remy. Am I saying that right? Uh, Ralma. Ralma, sorry. Ralma. The USS Ralma. And please identify the uh, other ship. Um, comms. Please open up a communication with uh, the other ship. Hail them. The Roma, sir? Roma, sir, or the unknown vessel? The Roma. Yes, sir. All right, so let's let's break this down. So, uh, Mr. Jensen, or yes, I sir. would like you to roll me a reason and science. The difficulty on this is a three, again, reduced to two because of the ship. Mm -hmm. The ship will assist you with a sensors and science. Okay. Will my sensor operation focus apply here? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Captain, if I may suggest, this may be a time to use the cloaking device. What was I thinking? Uh, cloaking device activate. Okay. <laughs> How does it work? <laughs> so we'll we'll say that you are able to cloak just well. Uh, but let's deal with this complication. Do you want to keep the complication or give me threat? Or I guess you don't have any momentum. So it's either you <laughs> give me threat or you keep it. Uh, let's keep it. Okay. So what I would say then is I'm actually going to give you a handout in roll 20. And this is to sort of get you uh, ready for it. So you should now see a handout that says unknown ship scans. I got it. Now that is what you learn about the unknown ship. What you learn about the Rama, however, is skewed. And actually, all you can really do is confirm that the Rama is there. Something is going on with the black hole that is obscuring or otherwise overloading your sensors that yeah. you're just not able to get a fix on the Rama. Mm. Okay, so, uh, Captain, the unknown ship is composed of a training alloy. Um, it, it is uh, falling into it. It is a uh, falling into the black hole's event horizon currently, and will pass it in roughly four hours. And there appears to be a repeating subspace signal coming from the ship, but we're not able to translate it. As far as the Roma is concerned, all we can confirm is that it is there. We're not getting any additional information from it. First officer, suggestions? Did you uh, manage to pick up life signs from either ship? Uh, did we? <laughs> Should be in the handout. Oh, is it? Oh, wait, maybe. Well, for Jensen, anyway. Well, uh, my first. We, we were getting a subspace signal. Uh, unless there's more in the handout, I'm not seeing anything about it. Uh, should size. be the first bullet point. Uh, I see the unknown ship is composed of a titanium alloy. Trinium is rare, dense metal. Federation has never been able to produce it in tritium artificially. Mm hmm. It's impossible. It is impossible to scan inside. So we're, no, we're not getting any. There it is. So we can't penetrate mm -hmm. it. Uh, okay. My first thought was that the easiest thing to do would be to try and transport any living, uh, uh, living people in distress over to our ship and get out. But 
if that's not an option, then I would say tractor beams uh, on 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 the ships to try and pull them out of harm's way would be uh, would be my second option. Science is the USS. Uh, is the uh, Federation ship falling into the event horizon, or can we get close enough to uh, lock on with the tractor beam? Now, what I would say is something I've neglected to say up to this point. Jensen, as a science officer, you get a free question as part of your role. So would you like your free question to be, is the Rama falling into the black hole? Yes, I would absolutely like that to be the question. Excellent. So what I'm going to say is that the Rama is also falling into the black hole at the same time rate as the unknown craft which means you have about a playtime of four hours. So, Captain, uh, yes, it is falling in the exact... It is also falling into the horizon. We have four hours to get both ships out. What are our options? Uh, well, tractor beam would be the most logical option to pull them out without, hopefully, without risking our own vessel at the same time. Do we have time to uh, assist both ships, or do we have to make a decision? How long will it take us to tractor beam one of the ships out? Mr. Uh, Taleup, I'd like you to mm -hmm. roll me a reason and an engineering. I'm going to spend some threat here. Difficulty of three. Uh, we don't have any momentum. You do not, but remember, you do have determination if you really want to succeed. You know what? As captain, I'm going to give the engineering officer one of my determination to assist him. Okay. Well, then I'll take that extra dice that has already rolled a crit success. So I start with two successes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, I don't think I have a, f a focus that will apply here, sadly, unless fusion reactors is applicable. But I can't, I, I can't justify that. Yeah, is I was going to say it's, from... it's close, but not quite. Is there a way for me as captain to assist? I do have a focus starship recognition. There is, yes. Uh, really, and and that's something I should say, is that if you you think your character can assist on something, feel free to speak up, because more often than not, I'll let it happen. Okay. Uh, you just have to tell me how you're assisting. Um, I would like to assist by running a... I would like to assist by using starship recognition mm -hmm. to identify, to, to kind of remember like the size and density of that class of starship mm -hmm. and then try to correlate it with um, like if we inverted the multivariant thematic conversion regulator, mm -hmm. we might be able to um, uh, increase the pulsar conversion of the tractor beam and, and push the ship out versus having to drag it out. So it would allow us to basically create a pulse to push both ships out simultaneously. Okay. I will allow you to assist then, Captain, with a presence and an engineering. Okay. How many dice do I roll? Uh, just one as an assist. All right. Per perfect. So a presence and an engineering. And do I have a control? Uh, no, it would be presence. Oh, no. So I do presence and then I do engineering mm -hmm. and then submit. And then I do 1d20. And do I have a focus? You would. Yes. All right, so I no tried. help from the captain, but Sorry. you do have, with the determination spend, you do have the three requisite successes. To lay up, you know something not exactly good, but also not exactly bad. If you were to, as the captain has suggested, push with the tractor beam, you might be able to get the unknown craft going away from the black hole. But because it is composed of neutronium, it's going to take a large amount of time to do so. Mm. Whereas the Rama, at least based on what your readings are, the Rama, you could just literally swoop in, tractor it, and pull it away. But in that scenario, we would be we would be abandoning the other ship and anyway we're on board. Would it be possible to send in send in an away team to the other ship to try and provide any assistance. That have they responded to our hails? Uh, they have not, unfortunately. Has the um, USS Rama responded to our hails? Also no. Unfortunate. 
But to answer uh, Commander Jaro's question, Kitty, uh, to answer Jaro's question, you could conceivably send over a shuttlecraft, but you cannot beam through Neutronium. So it would be, you would have to send out a small craft to dock with the unknown craft. First officer, suggestions? It's risky, but one, we have some signs that there are people aboard that other craft. And two, this is a ship unlike we've ever seen before. Um, this is a possible first contact situation, and I I don't feel comfortable abandoning them uh, if there is anyone on board. Is I'd that- be willing to lead a team to try and get in there and rescue anyone on board while uh, while the Matahari uh, helps the uh, USS Rommel. I agree. Something that I've always said is that you should never lose compassion. Um, I'd like you to head the away team um, and bring back any information you can gather. Hopefully save the other ship. Please keep in constant contact with us as you can. Um, gather your away team and please head out immediately. I do have a question for you, Captain First yes. Officer. Mm-hmm. Do we know how long we would have before one of our shuttlecraft becomes trapped within the pull of the gravimetric field? Science? Uh, that is a... Let's see. We would have to estimate that. Would I need to roll for this? Let's, let's give you a roll because I, I think you could use the momentum. Uh, roll mm. me... Actually, let me put it this way. Uh, what is your insight con? My insight con would be a 14. Okay, very decent. Uh, yeah, why don't you roll me an insight con then? And do you have anything like astro navigation, small craft? I have small craft. I was about to. <laughs> yep, small craft would help you then. Can I assist? I have small craft as well. Uh, I'm going to say not on this one. Um, because this is just him looking at the data to see if a small craft would be able to make it there. Perfect. And I have uh, two successes. Excellent. So you're going to get uh, two momentum, actually, because it was a difficulty of zero. My man. Perfect. So what you realize, Jensen, is as long as you get out before, let's say, three hours, 58 minutes... Uh, you would be able to pull away from the black hole no problem. But small it's craft. still going to be some fancy flying. Well, you would need a... With the away team would need a very skilled pilot, but they should be able to make it out uh, before either of the large craft passes that event horizon. Fair enough. My piloting skills are a little rusty, so I think I'll probably <laughs> bring someone along who's better at that um uh lieutenant commander jennings i could also you know use your presence on this away team too uh, i was hoping you'd say that (laughs) captain yes commander yes i would like to offer an alternative please please it may be possible to release some photon torpedoes and detonate them to create a shock wave to knock the other ship out of the danger zone. Which might buy you you some extra time if not rescue the unknown ship. What would be the risk to the unknown ship? Given that they have not communicated with us yet, there is some chance that they will interpret this as an attack. <laughs> some chance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would. <laughs> yeah, fairly good chance. I've always thought to myself that reason outweighs the phaser. Um, seeing as we have four hours, if it comes to it, and uh, if it's 30 minutes away from the cutoff, we'll definitely keep that in mind. But at this time, I'd like you to lead the away team, first officer, uh, security officer, and uh, the Matahari will uh, make sure that we rescue the, the Rama. Dismissed. All right. All right. Well, the end of the shuttle bay. All right. So who, I have Jaro. I have Jennings. Who else is going on the away mission? Um, any member of our crew who is a fancy flyer by any chance? 
you could potentially take Raven with you if you wanted, but I would encourage uh, maybe take uh, one of the actual other players. Um, oh, okay. I, I, well, we don't know the uh, the status of the engines of the unknown craft either, so it might be good to take an engineering officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure thing. All right, so we'll throw Talay up in there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, just for sake of argument, uh, do you think Prawl would come with you? Um, I it, think that... You would be pretty interested in trying to get some scans of this vessel. Sure, yeah. And I think he would be very useful to have around in case, um, uh, in case this turns into more of an investigation. Mm -hmm. Then, automatic mission. Yep, I like it. I would ag I would agree with that as well. All right, so I have Jaro, Jennings, uh, to lay up and Prawl. Anyone I'm missing? Um, I think that the captain and the science officer should stay on the bridge. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, um, I think we could use we could use Raven to, I don't know if any of us are flyers. Mm -hmm. I uh, think one of you has small craft. Okay. But yeah, let's, uh, let's say that you head down to the shuttle bay. Uh, who would be a con though? Cause that's who I'm going to make do this role. Yeah, it wouldn't be me. My con is middling at best. <laughs> Mine is bad. <laughs> my con is not bad it's i just don't have any uh focuses in flying so it's not going to be question gm yes you explain to me when we first created our characters there's an option to create a temporary npc or something of that nature you've beat me to the punch yes right. so i'd like to take on the role of that npc okay awesome so what this means is basically you are spinning up a supporting character and what the supporting character is, is it's an NPC that you can sort of jump into the shoes of uh, and essentially control them like you would your normal character. Cool. And uh, what this means is, just for sake of, of uh, ease of play, uh, you'll take over Raven. So Raven will go on the away mission as well. Okay. Um, but in the future, after we'll, and we'll talk more after the session... Um, you okay. guys can spin up as many supporting characters as you wish um, because the supporting characters are basically people on the crew that allow you to continue playing and role playing in the scene instead of just, you know, sitting back and going, well, this is a thing. <laughs> all right. So I can so make for, my. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, for example, I could have a bridge officer so that when I'm on away missions, I could still interact with what's going on on the ship. Correct. Well, Okay. All right. That's cool. I can create my uh, my my Bronx talking. You know, he's from the Bronx. You know, he's from New York. Yeah. You know, he's he's, he's a great fly. I can fly really good. You know, I was flying when I was like four years old. First, I was born in a in a shuttlecraft. Like it's gonna be great. My Bronx guy. Yeah. I love <laughs> it. We'll definitely though. have to get him in for the next session. <laughs> At some point, I just skin around. <laughs> all right. So uh, all of you pile into the shuttle and you fly out with Raven at the helm. So Raven. I need you mm -hmm. to roll me a daring and a con. The that. difficulty here is a three, but I'm going to spend some threat to increase the complication range. Now, what that means is that now any die that falls between 17 to 20 will be a complication. Yes. So a daring. I'm doing daring mm -hmm. and a what? And a con. Uh, 2d20. Do you want to spend any momentum? Crew, what do you guys think? Hmm. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and actually assist here, too. Okay. Um, perhaps by just taking over, um, um, I don't know. Partial monitoring of of some of the uh, some of the sensors, so I can help uh, yell out navigation, help gotcha. just to like. So let's have uh, let's have Jaro do a presence con. 
I well, suggest we maintain the momentum just in case we need to buy off a complication mm -hmm. since they're more likely now. I like where your mind's at. So I'm going to roll 2d20. Mm -hmm. And do I have a focus, which is small craft. You do. Submitting. All right. That's two successes. Can yes. Jaro yeah. get you the one you're missing? Um, would team leadership oh, be... Yeah. Okay, cool. You get the three successes hey. you need. Very nice. That's what I'm talking about. That's teamwork right there. <laughs> so uh, the shuttle does jostle and uh, sort of buckle a little bit, but uh, it's actually not that bad considering you are literally flying towards a black hole. But uh, Raven, you bring the shuttlecraft around so that you get a circle of the unknown craft. And as you do so, you realize that the Y-shaped craft... Uh, has an open bay that looks like you could fit your shuttle into. Um, it is on the rear of the vessel, and it, you know, as you look at it more, you start to think, yeah, I could. That that's maybe like a uh, a, a cargo bay of some sort. First officer, I believe that I see a cargo bay at the rear of the ship. Um, I think I could fit us in there. If you're confident, you can bring us in for a safe landing. I say, go for it. Very good, sir. Bring us in. All right. So because I think dramatic tension is needed, I now need a daring con again. Oh, boy. The difficulty is now going to be a four. And I will spend right. some more threat to, again, increase the complication range. You're a monster. <laughs> and I love it. Uh, crew, I think we should probably spend some... Uh... Absolutely. At least one, yeah, I'm thinking. One point. Yeah, I'm thinking mm -hmm. probably at least one. All right, so I will drag this out. Uh, stealing. If you spend one, you'll be rolling with three dice mm -hmm. against a difficulty of five. Mm -hmm. uh, difficulty of four. A difficulty of four. Right. Okay. So I'm doing mm -hmm. a, what was it, control or dare? daring? No, and daring con. and con. Thank you. Daring, con. Submit 3d20. Yes. Boom! Well, there's That's four what you I'm need. talking about. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Raven for the win. <laughs> yeah, Raven, again, skillful pilot is all hell. Gets you in to the cargo bay without even scratching the paint. It's almost. It's almost an art form the way you get it into the cargo bay. But as the shuttle sets down and the exterior sensors begin to report, um, I have a question for everyone. Would you have brought along EV suits? Yes. Okay. So you will be Standard required to EV. suit up to go outside because there is no atmosphere out there at the moment. Uh, but when you step out of the shuttlecraft, what you see is a wide open space with these metallic girders or metallic sort of support stations um, that are interspersed throughout this cargo bay. And there is a large double door that sort of opens like this. So that they sort of almost like a, an automatic door in real life where they just sort of pull apart. Um, but what you're seeing is next to this door, there is a red light. And there is a console in a language that is not translating. This is a first contact. Uh, Commander, I can't get a reading on the language on the console. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, uh, Genet Commander Toliap, do you uh, have any idea what the function of this device is? Given its location, I would presume that it controls the door, but let me give it a closer look. All right, to lay up. Insight engineering, please. Difficulty of two. Will my uh, uh, focus on computers help here? I'll let it happen, sure. I would like to assist on this one. Okay. Going to be using my intelligence data pad to try and scan as well. Okay. And what's the difficulty? Uh, the difficulty is a two. Uh, Prawl, you'll be assisting with an insight engineering of your own. And would my investigation focus count? It most definitely would. And just remind me, which attributes did you say? Insight engineering. 
Well, Tolop yes. has already gotten four successes. Very nice. Oh, damn! Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's go! I, I think you have momentum now. So, yeah, you guys are up to uh, five total, I believe. All right. So, uh, as you two look at this door and run with your tricorders... Uh, what you realize is that this is an airlock. There is quite literally a space beyond the cargo bay where there is another sort of auxiliary room. And, you know, it's an airlock. You basically step in, the door shuts, atmosphere comes in, you step through the other side. But with that many successes, I would say that you are able to not only operate this console, but you have complete control over its function, if you so wish. Um, can I use my tricorder to figure out what the atmosphere is on, uh, I guess I won't scan through the, well, that's can the I thing. use the console to figure out what the atmosphere is, what the composition of the atmosphere is standard. Right. Uh, what I would say though, is that strangely enough, when you run your tricorder, you're picking up, you know, actual things like you're not being blocked by the neutronium hull. So it's really ah. just inside the ship. You can act freely but getting outside in is where you would get that difficulty. Um, but if you give me a point of momentum, I will tell you about the atmosphere that you're picking up. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. okay. So what you learn is that there is a class Y environment on the other side of that door. And sort of as a reminder or an explanation, uh, a class Y environment is like a demon planet, uh, quote unquote. Uh, it is similar to the Silver Blood episode of Voyager, where your operational time will be very limited. Hmm. Uh, Captain, the panel here indicates that the atmosphere beyond this airlock will be quite caustic. Uh, I estimate we have perhaps two, two and a half hours before our suits will start to lose uh uh, I don't know the word in English. Uh, Structural integrity. All right. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Prowl, you uh, you wouldn't happen to know of uh, any uh, species that exists in uh, this kind of atmosphere that, that we've been in contact with already? Right off the top of my head, I do not. All right. Well, if it's safe to enter for at least a limited amount of time, I, uh, I ask you to please uh, open up the door so we can go in and see if there are any survivors. All right. So you cycle through the airlock. You step through to the other side. And what you see is almost like a carving of a rock. Uh, the hallways are very smooth, made out of a dark material that isn't quite neutronium, but your sensor, your tricorders do still pick up that there's like flex of neutronium. So this is mm. some sort, of, some form of an alloy. But uh, what you see is again these smooth corridors, and there are piles of ash every so often, like this black pile of ash. And next to these piles of ash are these bits of metal that your tricorders report are just absolutely glowing with a type of radiation that would prove fatal if you were to touch them. Even through our hazmat suits. Correct. Wow. And this ash, do, can, can we detect whether this was once living matter? I would say you could certainly do a roll for it. Uh, this would be, and whoever wants to do the role, this would be a reason and a medicine. The difficulty would be a five. Oof. Not my specialty. Um, Commander, I really don't feel comfortable in here right now. <laughs> Neither do I, but... So I think we should make this search as fast as possible, maybe not slow down to check on every little thing. But I do think we need to make a fair scan of the area for living life forms. In fact, now that we are inside the ship, 
Mm -hmm. um, is it possible to pick up uh, anything on our tricorder's lifetimes? There is, but mm -hmm. you're not able to get a specific location. If you want to okay. hone in on it, though, it would be yeah. a task. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, maybe throw this over to intelligence or the engineer to maybe uh, try and hone in on this life form. I will attempt to hone in and figure out where on board this is. Okay. I'd like you to roll me a reason security prowl. The difficulty will be a four, and you would have a focus. Should I use any momentum, crew? I'm not sure. I... <laughs> On a difficulty five? Four. Yes. Oh. Or you oh, have yeah. a focus. I think you should roll. You use use one. So you would have to get at least one critical then. Mm -hmm. And you do have a focus though. Yeah. So I'll use one point to roll three dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hopefully get a get a crit. Use two. We have four right now, or five? You have four at the moment. Four. Yeah, go for it. Use two. Yeah, so that would be a total of three momentum for four dice. Mm -hmm. And you said this was reason and security? You got it. Look at that. Five successes. You get at your point you get at least one point of momentum back. So I believe you're at two now overall. So, uh Prawl, what you're detecting is that a deck above you, there is what appears to be a life support pod. It is the only living thing that your sensors are able to pick up, but it is a life support pod nonetheless. My readings are picking up a lone life support pod one deck above us. All right. Um, team, I think our priority should be to recover the life support pod, get it back to the shuttle, and get us back to the ship. So I'd say we move out immediately uh, to the location that Lieutenant Commander Prowl just identified. Okay. So, because again, evil GM, uh, I would like everyone on the away team to roll me a fitness and a con. The difficulty on this is just a one. But I need a roll from everybody on the away team. Uh, 2d20? Yep. Okay, uh, any focuses? Uh, if you have survival, if you have EVA operations... If you have uh, really anything of that note, yeah. So, all right. So, Prawl gets two. Raven gets one. Talia gets the, one. I'm stuck on the focuses. Uh, run one by me. Um, what exactly is the situation? This is you navigating a Class Y environment in an EV suit. Would my ground vehicle... Ah, uh, if you were driving an Argo yeah. buggy through the corridors, I'd let it happen. But uh... <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> no, I mean I got like emergency medicine, but no, not really. So yeah, just a one d twenty. Uh, two d twenty. Two twenty. Yeah. How do you? Oh, sorry, I keep asking this, but how do you know? It's which... always two. Yeah, it's always unless by default you buy more. two. Or yeah, oh. so unless you buy more or you're assisting, it's always two. Oh, there you go. Makes that easy. Okay. Like we'll focus. No. All right, so you all pass, and you even get a momentum for your troubles. So you're able to eventually find what is a, essentially a Jeffrey's tube or an analog of such. It's a ladder that leads up. Um, but what you would notice is as you start to climb the ladder, um, the rings of the ladder are farther apart than, say, Starfleet regulations, uh, as if almost to suggest that not only are there humanoids, or used to be humanoids here, but that maybe they were larger or perhaps uh, of a greater size or arm length than you would expect. Um, but as you climb up, you're all able to get up just fine. And you follow Prawl to the life support pod. Essentially, it is another sort of open space 
uh, like the cargo bay you parked your shuttle in. Uh, so again, wide open space, columns every so often, and in the exact middle of the space with wires and conduits leading out of it into the floor, there is a cylinder that has been frosted over and it is the source of your life sign that you detected. However, you cannot get a read on what species it is. Hmm. I never made. Is there a way to um, activate the pod and reawaken the being inside without without hurting it? I would say that would need to be an insight engineering on the part of Tuleup, and the difficulty would be a three. I and I don't have any focus that would. Yeah, I don't think you do, unfortunately. Support on this one. Would I be able to assist simply with? Um... Uh, I have some experience in cultural studies and in, in sort of deciphering new new cultures. So maybe just talking through uh, that with the chief engineer. Yeah, why don't you assist with a control or a presence and a science? Uh, the difficulty was three. Correct. Should we spend the momentum here? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yep. Oh, yeah, I'll take the extra dice. <clears throat> All right, there's got two. two. And Jarl hey. assists with another, so you get that momentum right back. Nice. Worth nice. it. So what I would say <laughs> is that, interestingly, the environment in the pod is a class M not a class Y. Really? So it stands to reason that if you were to open the pod here, you would essentially be cooking whoever's inside alive. Delicious. But... Uh, um... Commander? <laughs> I have good news and I have bad news. Well, the good news on? is the being inside appears to use the same atmosphere that we do. Uh, the bad news is... Uh, First off, I question whether or not it would be a good idea to release an unknown life form upon us on an unknown ship, but also it would die immediately. Well, <laughs> Can we get to board our ship somehow? Yeah. Do we have a transporter on our shuttle? You do. All right. Um, I say we make our way back to the shuttle and attempt to use uh, the transporter to beam aboard the um, beam aboard this life commander uh, and then may i make a suggestion sure thing uh i suggest we attach a comm badge to the pod thus facilitating achieving a lock if we do it on the shuttlecraft even if we only manage to achieve a partial lock on the life form it still will not die immediately upon transport all right. Good thinking. However, this will necessitate at least one of us returning to the shuttle to retrieve a spare comm badge. <laughs> uh, uh, Commander, I'd be happy to leave my comm badge uh, for the time being. Oh, yeah, Stop it. I'll go. You guys, you can't. It's fun. underneath your Evo suits. Yeah, I was going to say, it is on your oh, Evo suits. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so who's going? I'll go. Right. You'll go? Jennings will go. All right. So, Jennings, I need another fitness con, please. Difficulty of two this time. It's getting harder. Mm -hmm. I see my fitness is so good, but my con is so hot trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, minimum two, and then I add any applicable focuses. I don't really see any. Yeah, I don't think you have one, unfortunately. No. Hey, you still get the two successes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Jennings, you get back to the shuttle, grab a comm badge, come back, and slap it onto the life, uh, life support pod. And uh, my question is, who's going to be doing the actual transporting? Uh, 
then it commanded Joliap might be... I think that might be our best bet. Okay. I could volunteer. I certainly volunteer. <laughs> All right. So let's break it down because transporting is complicated and can get very bad very quickly, but let's break it down. So you're not in a transporter room, which means that the base difficulty of two becomes a three. You're not transporting to a transporter room, so that becomes a difficulty of four. You're also in a neutronium ship, which means that as a complication, the difficulty is now five. Jeez. And it is a control engineering that the shuttle will assist with a sensors engineering. Right. Um, did leaving the um, communication badge on the uh, um, life pod create any advantage that might help I, with our difficulty? I will say, and this is, again, an, a learning experience. Hmm, excuse me. Uh, if you spend two momentum to create an advantage you can narratively say this com badge does something special and it would lower the difficulty to a four, but it would cost two momentum. Or we could spend those two momentum to get, no, wait, we'd have to spend three. So basically it's like spending two to get one automatic success almost. I would say, guys, that's worth it. I think that's worth it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I also use my value of get along better with machines than people? You certainly can. To spend the determination to take the extra die with automatically scoring a critical. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So now um, you only have to get a will two? Do so. Yeah, he only has to get two. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, and my control security is 15. Uh, control engineering. Control engineering, sorry, is 15. And how do I roll for the shuttle? Uh, I forgot to put a sheet in, so just roll me a 1d20. You want to see a 10 or lower. I'm going to guess that my uh, computer's f focus won't help me here. Nah, unfortunately not. You would need, like, transporters and replicators. Which I considered, but I didn't take. Oof. All right, so we need to see an assist from the shuttle here. Come on, shuttle. Come on. 20... Let's see here. Uh, slash oh, R right. or slash roll would do it. Oh, so slash roll 1d20. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh. wow. Oh. Clutch. <laughs> clutch. Talk about a clutch. <laughs> yeah, thing. it's clutch. Just on the line. <laughs> so, to lay up, you have a little difficulty at first, but you compensate for it easy. And materializing in the shuttlecraft with you is indeed the full life support pod. Excellent. Uh, well, I say, um, Raven, uh, yes, sir. please, back to the Matahari. Taking us out, sir. All right. So, uh, not to leave the captain and Jensen out of this, we're going to cut back to the CIC. And we're going to do something involving that uh, certain other ship, as it were. Uh, specifically, the USS Rama. So, uh, as you all sort of uh, see and hear the away team reporting that they're coming back, uh, Captain, you're getting a hail from the Rama. Uh, on screen. And appearing on screen is not something you expected to see. What you see is a Tholian. In other <clears> words, <throat> an orange crystalled crystalline spider-like being. Hello? <laughs> they just sort of stare at you. Uh, science, can we get a translation? Are they even talking? No, they're not even talking. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to get a translation without any uh, vocal patterns, sir. I, I am... Reason outweighs the phaser. Uh, <laughs> all right, so... Uh, greetings. Uh, I'm the captain of the USS Montahari. Uh, we're responding to your distress signal. More silence. And it starts to get maybe a little awkward. And then finally they speak, and the Universal Translator is able to pick it up. We have claimed this vessel. We will be returning it 
to its proper location. I don't understand. More silence. Where is the crew? The crew died when they fell into the black hole. How did they fall into the black hole? More silence. Science, what do we know about this species? Um, I'm actually ask. I'm gonna ask Helm to uh, com, com, communications to mute mute us for a second. What do we know about this species? Um, like to go ahead and do the look up the Tholians as much as I can in the computer system. See what we know. All right, you basically know everything that's on Memory Alpha if you're familiar with Memory Alpha. A little bit. Uh, How do you spell them? Uh, T H O L I A N. All right. Oh, they're xenophobes. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we know pretty much what's been recorded in history about them. Mm -hmm. Very xenophobic race. They really, really hate time travel. Uh, Federations had run ins with them various throughout the past they're very aggressive hmm uh, um jeez and it would go to reason captain that they're if they're here for the for the rama they're probably not alone do they usually travel in groups uh most of the attacks in the past have happened in swarm tactics I am not interested in engaging in a conflict with a shuttlecraft out. Um, I would like to perform. Can I perform a sensor sweep to see if I detect any other Tholian vessels? You can. That's going to be a reason and a science. The right. Matahari will assist you with a sensor science. The difficulty is a one. But I'm going to spend all my remaining threat to make it a difficulty of four. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you said reason science. Correct. Yep. And I, I, I'm assuming my uh, sensor operation will fly here. Yep. Okay. And the, the Mata Hari has assisted you. So I would like to assist as the commander, captain, <laughs> with my starship recognition as sure. a focus. Uh, go ahead and do a presence command in your case. Presence. You will need to crit to pass this. Presence command. Uh, uh, D20. Yes. Okay, so unfortunately, not enough. That so, <laughs> Jensen, you run a scan of the area, and either your sensors are not picking up Tholian vessels, or there are none. You don't really know. Um... Jensen, can you give us another sweep, a scan of the uh, the Rama? I am not convinced that there are any human survivors or Federation survivors aboard. See if you can pen penetrate the hull. Uh, yes, sir. Now you can spend one point, or no, you're the science officer. You could make that your free question. Oh uh, yeah, can I actively? Can I actually get a proper scan of the Rama now? You now can. that we know where we're looking for. Yeah, and uh, what you see is there's approximately 40 Tholians on that vessel. Uh, That's it. But no humans? No humans, no Vulcans, no Tellarites, just Tholians. Uh, so we're reading 40 Tholians on the vessel. No other life signs detected. Out of character, I'd like to ask the GM a question. What mm -hmm. would be the proper Starfleet protocol in this situation? Like, it's obviously was... a starship out of time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, like, you know, there's no Federation, you know, uh, crew aboard. Would it, be, would it be within regulation that we want to try and rescue the ship? But that would obviously incur a conflict. We've obviously, as an as organization, as mm -hmm. a... As a Federation have had conflict with these creatures. I'm assuming that I don't want to start a war here. Right. Might it be in, in our best interest just to let them take the ship? That is something you have to decide as a captain, unfortunately. It is a major decision. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Captain, uh, just with our shuttlecraft out there and knowing that they're Solians, I would recommend tactical alert, though. <laughs> uh, bring us up to yellow alert. 
um, maintain a sensor lock on their ship. Uh, comms bring up the comm again. Um, Tholian crew aboard the Rama. Um, we will not interfere uh, as you proceed. Please keep your distance and we will keep ours. Um, Captain uh, Malik out. And after a moment, navigation reports, sir, they are pushing towards the black hole. Fair enough. And yeah, what I would say is that as the rest of the senior staff arrives back on the vessel, uh, we sort of cut back to the exterior of the uh, black hole. And what we see is that the Rama literally enters into the event horizon and then seems to hang there, frozen in time. And at the same time, the unknown craft, the one you got the life support pod, also enters the event horizon and appears frozen. But as we sort of bring the session to a close, the Matsahari sort of flies away with an unknown life form in a life support pod. And that's where we'll pick up in a few weeks. Yay. That was awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. That was great. Thank you. All right. So again, uh, if you are hearing this, it's because I've put this up on YouTube. Again, the actual first stream session will be May 2nd, two weeks from today. It'll be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, we look forward to seeing you turning out and chatting in chat. But this is where I'm going to end the recording. So Twitch, YouTube, etc. Thank you so much for tuning in and Live long and prosper. Bye, stream.